to the next. Anything else with the Hamilton Washington back and forth? You guys good? I'm good. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. As a very mediocre American history major, I was exposed to a lot of these kinds of stories told in very different ways. And what I wanted to try to do was remove any of the black and white nostalgia, sepia tone, and make this feel vital and vibrant. Here comes the general. Ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the general. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the general. The pride of Mount Vernon. Here comes the general. George Washington. We are outgunned. What? Outmanned. What? Outnumbered. Outplanned. <laughs> we gotta make an all-out stand. Hey, yo, I'm gonna need a right-hand man. <laughs> We're meeting Washington at the crux of the entire conflict. Um, Boston is over, he's just lost New York. His army is as close to being annihilated in that moment as you can imagine. To meet him that way suddenly takes us out of the history books, it takes us into the urgency of, oh, we might not win. Initially, when the war begins, there's a lot of retreating on the part of Washington. And what he's trying to do, really, is just keep the war going. He's juggling how to get all of these soldiers out of harm's way and, and away from all of the ships that are still in New York Harbor. He has no one to turn to. Up pops Hamilton. Have I done something wrong, sir? On the contrary, I called you here because our odds are beyond scary. Your reputation precedes you, but I have to laugh. Sir? Hamilton, how come no one can get you on their staff? Sir, don't get me wrong. You're a young man of great renown. I know you stole British cannons when we were still downtown. Nathaniel Green and Henry Knox wanted to hire you. Yeah, to be their secretary, I don't think so. Now, why are you upset? I'm not. It's all right. You want to fight, you've got a hunger. Just like you when I was younger. Head full of fantasies of dying like a martyr. Yes. Dying is easy. Young man living is harder. It's really fair to say that without Washington, Hamilton would not have had someone to enable him to achieve the things that he achieved. Conversely, without Hamilton, Washington wouldn't have had someone there to help him and advise him. When you're in someone like Washington's position, you don't, there aren't many people that you can truly trust. Hamilton had distinguished himself multiple times as a warrior. It's probably one reason why he was frustrated that he was not then promoted as a warrior, but then was promoted as a secretary and they decamped to George Washington. I went to Congress and tell him you need supplies. You rally the guys, master the element of surprise. Ooh. Rise above my station, organize your information till we rise to the occasion of our new name. It's rare that you, you do a show where you have so many literal touchstones, places that support the research that you've done. It's helped keep the fire burning, you know, day after day doing the show, eight shows a week, and, and being able to imagine yourself in a very real way in those same footsteps. That would have been Mr. and Mrs. Washington's room. You're looking at it just as they would have seen it. I can't even imagine how much stress he must have been under. I can't either. All of them, all those guys, like how much stress they must have been constantly, every day, just. You got 20,000 people out, just right outside your door who right. are constantly, you know, <laughs> trying not to die. Trying not to die, <laughs> trying, trying to know. figure out how to stay alive. Exactly. Like, Literally trying not know. to die. The front parlor would have been used by General Washington's aide de camps. Hamilton, along with John Lawrence, they were the two prominent secretaries that worked for Washington here. All the paperwork it took to administer the Continental Army is being done in this room here. As Washington's aide de camp, Hamilton is doing everything from sorting through intelligence to carrying out prisoner exchanges. He's writing essays, he's writing letters, he's teaching himself about foreign currencies. So he was really using uh, the American Revolution as a kind of crash course in history and politics. Just being in Valley Forge, you realize how much ground they had to cover. When he was like, retreat, attack, retreat, we're moving our men back. It's like, that's like miles. That's like crossing state lines without a car or horse and carriage. Those are soldiers that are like foot soldiers. The scope of it was just so much bigger and, and far more real. Y'all yeah, be having reenactments out there? Yeah, we do it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. We'll do cannon firing and that kind of thing. Would they let us fire a cannon? We'll get you on a musket. How's that? You know? 